<laughs> Hi, everyone. Th thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Mike McMahon. I'm from a company called Extreme, which is an OTT platform provider. Uh, I wanted to walk you through today a bit about what, you know, what, what that means to be an OTT platform provider, some of the challenges uh, our customers are facing, and the way that we typically deploy a solution. Uh, it's, it's not a sales pitch. Uh, what I'm interested in describing is the kind of greater ecosystem of uh, the way we work with our partner community and the kind of way the jigsaw puzzle fits together in a sort of boilerplate standard deployment. Uh, so that the intent is, you know, after listening to this, you'd have a good impression about what we do, what kind of pieces would go around it, the, the types of other vendors that we work with and why, uh, and what the, what the end to end solution would do. So with that, uh, I'll get into, this slide's a little hard to look at, but in general, the point here is that you know, the value chain itself, is, it's being disrupted, I think everyone knows that, but the way you know, people are leapfrogging one another, a lot of people want to go to direct to consumer, you've got telcos buying uh, OTT providers, you've got people that are you know, into hardware that are you know, having their own uh, VOD solutions, Apple, Google, Amazon are all uh, actively going into it. But in the end, uh, ad you know, adaptive bitrate and OTT solutions and, and CDNs really kind of opened up the, the floodgates for this kind of activity and allowed this sort of uh, value chain uh, displacement to, to take place. So we're seeing a lot of uh, interest from people like, like broadcasters, uh, brand owners, not, not necessarily studios, but, you know, but like people with brands that want to explore uh, online offerings, as well as what you think of as traditional operators, pay TV operators, cellular network operators, ISPs, and so forth. So in, in, in a generic sense, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that people seem to be challenged with is they want to go fast. They want to get it over the line. They want to have something up and running that a, you know, a real user can use relatively quickly. They want to control the cost. They want to take advantage of the promise of, of you know, IP streaming uh, and, and reduce that cost. They also, as they dig into it, start to get the, you know, a pretty clear picture that there's no end-to-end -end solution in a true sense. You're going to end up with integration points, perhaps in your own back office, uh, perhaps to put other vendors around a, a core solution, some combination of that. Uh, and, and dealing with you know, selecting who's who and which pieces you want in your jigsaw and then overseeing that integration uh, can be a challenge. In the end, you want, I believe, to remain relatively flexible and innovative, uh, which means you don't want to get locked in to a, a, you know, a, a, a particular vendor or, or a way of doing things so that you know, having control over where those points of integrations are and how they're done and maintaining a, a sense of architect, call it architectural uh, purview over the thing. A and then in some more specific cases, depending on the, the use case or the, the exact uh, end user proposition that you have in mind, a lot of people have maybe small amounts of content that's very, very uh, high value and it's going to have huge numbers of end users. Other people want to license a, you know, an absolute ton of content and have a very broad offering. Uh, there, there's quite a variation in terms of you know, how much content and, and what type of user uh, is going to be involved. Uh, and, and then monetizing it, whether it's ad supported or transactional, subscription, whether it's tied to some other uh, bundle that you might have with a, with a broadband offering, whether you've got um, you know, marketing campaign partners, you know, buy a new TV, get, get three months of this, uh, packaging and uh, you know, bundling the product itself, uh, we see a lot of differences. And then in the end, uh, you know, the devices, uh, again, we see a, a pretty big variation in terms of which, which out of the gate devices people want to support, the, the degree of customization they want to differentiate versus the you know, more contained, uh, templatized, out of the box solution to keep things simple and clean and fast. So those, you know, depending on, on our customer, those are the types of differences we see. Our product, uh, the, the way we, we view it in a kind of modular sense is that there's, you know, to the, to the far left it's, you know, Hollywood, to the far right is, you know, end users on an iPad, say, but 
getting video into the system and, and the way it's ingested, the, the handshakes that you've got from your supply chain partners, the, the additional enrichment by way of metadata and imagery and so forth is all sort of inbound raw materials. Uh, packaging and processing that for the right devices, getting it out into the CDN, perhaps archiving the mezzanine uh, files and so forth. That's, that's all in a video workflow uh, ingest mechanism uh, in ours. In the middle is, is where the heart of the thing is in terms of a OTT platform, and that's about you know, taking that content you've loaded, figuring out what, what types of services you're going to offer, how they're going to be priced, what the usage rules are around them, being able to uh, editorialize and curate content, uh, but ultimately you're configuring a shop front and you're configuring you know, discovery paradigms and supplying API, navigational, search, discover, navigate, play type APIs to a, to a client app. We have, uh, after that, uh, you know, out of the box, reference applications, template apps. We also often work with third parties to create very unique uh, experiences, sometimes multiple third parties, to provide a you know, wide range of devices and a bit of mix for our customers. So that's th sort of where we play uh, in the space. Uh, just to go into it a little bit about the, you know, from left to right again, uh, the supply chain can be quite complicated. You know, some, some folks have got uh, an archive system or the, their own existing video workflows that they want to repurpose for OTT. Other folks are entering this uh, very fresh. Um, I might be doing license deals in, uh, with studios for the first time and can have a, a wide and disparate range of sources that they want to get in. There can also be supplementary stuff. I, I mentioned metadata uh, images, metadata enrichment and so forth. So other raw materials that need to be uh, brought in and managed like a supply chain, meaning you know, tracking the fulfillment, creating orders, understanding where your orders of, of your uh, you know, supply chain partners are and, and what's, what's coming in, how, you know, if it's late, if it needs to be resent and so forth. That, that can be quite complex, that area of the system. We refer to uh, Media Maker Loading Dock, which includes that sort of supply chain integration, as, as well as the ingest and uh, archiving and uh, propagation to, to a CDN for the various flavors. We list here some of the partners that we would deal with. So this, this includes people that provide metadata and metadata enrichment, as well as people that can um, you know, help uh, clear up that upstream supply chain uh, by normalizing some of the input sources. So I list, you know, Deluxe, Technicolor, uh, Ubiquity is another one uh, in that space. Folks that provide inputs by way of uh, signals from, from live streams like Elemental, uh, Grace Note, or, or Rovi for metadata and imagery. These are all partners that bring, uh, you know, input into our system and we work with them uh, to, to help things go more smoothly, to provide a sort of pre-integrated offering to our customers. The store being the kind of uh, middle part of, the, of that uh, pillar system I described, that, that's where you're configuring, you know, what, what is my product? Who can use it? Uh, you know, is it limited by simultaneous streams? Is it limited by parental controls? Is it limited by a number of registered devices? Uh, how am I going to package this stuff up? Is it, you know, buy one of these and get two of these for free? Is it a subscription model? Are there, do I allow ads? Do I not? Uh, is there a way to uh, start with ads and have a freemium type model and then, uh, you know, upgrade and get rid of the ads? So, you know, configuring the usage and monetization uh, mechanisms around that is, is, is a big part of what we provide is by way of a toolkit. It's, it's also about, again, editorial curation and uh, helping people discover content. Uh, some of the people we play with in this space, I mentioned Rovi before, also the typical integration points are on, say, a billing system or an identity management system, uh, extended analytics and reporting tools. So here's, this is a, um, a you know, set of vendors that we, we typically would interact with when we were replying to a, a RFP in the, in the in the field, you've got people that can supply ads from ad networks, you've got people that provide more elaborate uh, billing solutions, you've got analytics uh, providers for increased uh, understanding of the usage patterns and being able to slice and dice stuff and understand the quality of experience and so forth in the system. 
the third sort of pillar closest to the end users, of course, the actual user experience rendered on a device. What we what we like to think of is there's you know there's a mix of um, out of the box you know bog standard type capability, and there's a, there's a need in the marketplace for um, something very very uh, simple and lightly skinnable that can be brought to bear uh, to launch quickly. There's also a need often uh, to differentiate, sometimes radically, not, not, not just in terms of the device reach itself, but in the, the, the way the experience works on the device. So, you know, the way we look at this is uh, we want to answer both of those, and again, it goes back to, you know, having what we have out of the box, but then also being able to work with, with third-party partners. So that's, that's a flavor, the sort of the out-of-the-box template that, that we would bring to bear. Uh, and then you know a list of, of vendors that we often work with on the end user experience. There's others, of course, in this space. Uh, typically, what you would want to look for, I think, in building a solution is to not have these two particular pieces of your ecosystem doing it together for the first time, but to have a track record of you know the front end vendor understanding the back end APIs, the the back end uh, vendor being experienced enough in supporting the front end vendor to to do something custom, but. Not, not, not be the guinea pig in that particular integration. Um, so, you know, again, the message here is what, what we like to bring what we bring to bear. We like for people to make the most use out of it, but we like to bring whole solutions uh, into a, you know, an RFP scenario. So we, we would typically uh, understand the RFP, of course, understand uh, the, the way we fit into it, and, and then reach out to a network of, of partners um, and, and bring bring a proposal uh, to a customer that, you know, named each of the individual pieces that were going to be involved, carried forth uh, pricing and so forth from all the vendors, so people could you know understand this is what it would really take to get over the line with what I want. These are the integration points I need to pay attention to. These are, you know, some of the options I might have with with uh, various third party vendors, uh, and and that's the way we believe a, uh, you know, an end to end solution can be can be considered and, and, and it can be understood uh, by a customer and understood in terms of complexity, understood in terms of uh, in, you know, the number of integration points, the general level of effort there, and the overall pricing of the, of the whole thing. Um, so that's the way we like to do it. Uh, we're very open to partners. We tend to collaborate with them uh, often early on in a, in a sales environment or you know, channel alignment. Uh, but then we want to turn it into the technology teams and actually bring a solution that's pre-integrated uh, to the market. So that, that's the way we uh, tend to do it. Uh, we interact a lot uh, throughout the, this ecosystem, which is, which is broad. I mean, you're all at this event. You can see how many people are here. There's, you know, for, for any one piece to the puzzle, there's often a dozen or so choices. It can often be a, a, a difficult choice. Um, you know, ideally for us, we would have a handful in each particular area and be able to bring a bit of a, call it Chinese menu uh, to the table. Um, often we'll s select one or the other and, and strongly recommend that in, in the RFP because it's, it's a bit differentiated from, from their peers and it re really resonates with what that customer's asking. So we play a bit of a matchmaking role because the way our piece works is we tend to be at the center of the puzzle, uh, I guess, and, and you know, all the integration points. Not, the bulk of them circle around uh, us. So for us to be the recommender of, of the third parties is, is often a position we're, we're put into. Um, this is a bit of a logo chart, but you know, breaking out the, again, the pillars from the left to the right and being a bit more granular in the, in the way that is, that, that should give you a flavor of the kind of people that we would interact with and in getting an RFP together and, and the way that we might um, make some choices and, and bring a solution to bear. There's a deployment of ours down in New Zealand called Lightbox. It's a, a subscription video on demand service. Uh, the way that was built was, was in this model that I'm describing. And again, you know, below you can see uh, sort of from left to right in that, in that pillar system, the, the various vendors that were brought to bear and integrated for, for that solution. Uh, and that's all I had to say for today, but I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions? No. No. And you just want me to.